Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we're talking with Mike Paletta again, and on this episode, he's going to share some tips and tricks about feeding. spin up that feeding tips and tricks video. Um, Premium Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply this week released two really good videos, right? And I know I always say that, but again, they're really good videos. One of them, for example, on the Premium Aquatics YouTube channel, uh, Jeff went and demonstrated um, basically a hang-on UV sterilizer. And then for me, I was kind of like, wow, most of us who have these little quarantine systems, I mean, that's a priceless add-on that A, I didn't know existed, and B, very useful, right? Especially in these smaller systems, right? So again, that's the Premium Aquatics um, YouTube channel and then the bulk grief supply YouTube channel what they did is they released one where it was their Q&A Monday kind of video where they talked about selecting fish with a purpose meaning we always have pests in our aquariums and so um, you know what we can do is we can select certain types of fish to eliminate some of those pests example you know aptasia or something that's somewhat common in reef tanks so if you select an aptasia eating file fish it's one of those fish that you stock well, again, it's one less thing you got to worry about, and at the same time, right, uh, you take and have a cool fish, right? So, again, they kind of review some of the best fish for those purposes, and again, it's one of those topics where I don't think it's discussed too much, uh, at least in a nice collective kind of bunch, so to speak, and, uh, and I thought it was very useful. So that being said, again, Premium Aquatics YouTube channel, Bulk Your Supply YouTube channel. Now, as far as this week's video, the interesting part about this one, again, it's feeding tips and tricks, uh, but what happened was Mike had never used the HPD, and I was never kind of like pushing it on him, but it, you know, he had a fish, this, that, and the other that he had some issues with, and uh, long story made short, he started using the HPD to try it, and now he's hooked. Um, you know, with that being said, though, um, you know, since it was on HPD, I wanted to kind of expand it a little bit, meaning that, you know, what were some of the tips and tricks he could offer, right, to help new hobbyists as well as experienced hobbyists, you know, based on the articles he's read, the experiments he's performed, etc. And since we haven't done an update on that ELO system and the sunlit tank, we also take the time out in this video to actually kind of review those systems and the progress that's been made over the past, we'll say two-ish years, right? Because it's probably been about that long since, um, since we did a little bit of a dive into those systems. So that's what's on this week's video. And with that being said, again, if you're looking for what I consider the best fish food on the planet, excuse me, American Reef's HPD. So that's AmericanReefHPD.com is where you can get it. And you'll see a lot more about it in this video. Talk about something we've not talked spoken about before and right. something that's often neglected but becoming a, a bigger deal especially for <laughs> little kids we're gonna talk yeah about. we're gonna talk about Ava Beva Kugelatz <laughs> over there <laughs> so what we're talking about is, is food and feeding uh -huh. uh, as we've gotten better at keeping a lot of things nutrition has become more of a something we need to understand better and for the biggest problem biggest thing we always look at when you get a new fish the first thing you try to look at is is it eating yeah yeah and a lot of times we take a risk, we get a fish that's semi-eating, not really eating robustly. And then when we get it home, trying to find foods after we quarantine it and get it accustomed to the tank is often a big problem. Yep. So I have been looking for different foods pretty much forever. I go through a, a lot of uh, mysa shrimp, which fatten up the fish very nicely. And once you get them eating it, they sure. grow and, and do really well. Sure. But it also produces a lot of waste. It's fairly expensive and it's not conducive for every fish that gets it. Right. So I have been 
negligent in that up until recently, I didn't really use your food. I didn't really use the HPD. Because I'm figuring, oh, it's just another gel food. It won't make any difference. So I got the Moorish Idol here, and I got the Gold Flake Angel. The Moorish Idol was picking its stuff. Uh, I was literally smashing food into rocks, putting it on the bottom to let him pick at it. Right. And I said, okay, I'm going to try just about everything I can to get this stupid fish to eat. Because I've lost way too many Moorish Idols over the years. Because it's an absolutely stunning fish. Uh, and in this tank where I have what I consider my best looking fish, right. it, it's the, this, this, the standard bear for the rest of the fish. Although I still love the uh, peppermint hog I fish too. The hog is still my favorite. So I, I tried it, and what I found was, as you will hopefully see, virtually everything likes it, and it's easy to use. All I do is mix up a batch of it, uh -huh. put it in the fridge, then on the screen that I have on top of the tank, I just grate it on there, and virtually everything in the tank eats it. Gold Flake Angels eat it. The Multibar Angels come out of their cave and eat it. The Peppermint Hog obviously eats it, because that's why it's a hog. But you can see both of the uh, multi bars come out and eat it. And what's funny is it's 100% opposite of why most people use that food. Meaning they put it in a cube and shove it in a bag and then walk away and let them pick at it so the little pieces don't hit the column. But from your end of it, you're breaking it up on the top. I'm breaking right. it up at the top really easily. Yeah. I mean, on this egg cr or on this uh, screen, it breaks up real right. nice and nice little pieces. Right. And it's a nice size for everybody to eat. And you can see the gold flake, and you can see the colors on the gold flake. You can see the anthias eat it. And because of this, I feed, can feed this tank four, five, six times a day. <laughs> where I break off a cube, set it on top, grate some, walk come away. back an hour or two later, grate some. And it just works perfectly in this tank. What and you can see the male anthias has kept this coloration. Everybody has nice colors in this tank. But the, the most impressive was the multi-bars, because yeah. those are really difficult fish to keep, and they're even more difficult to get to eat. Right. And they've done really well in this tank, simply from the standpoint of I got them to eat fairly quickly. And so now, okay, so tar conversations, a lot of people with more shuttles have had tons of success. Did it, did it take to it right away, or what happened? It took to it right away. I, I weaned it from black worms, mm -hmm to mices and black worms, and then to this, because the gold flake wasn't eating at first. Right. And I also smashed food into this, and one of the things I said, okay, I have a gel type food that will smash in there very nicely. Right. Put the rock down, and he started picking at it right away. Right. And then he started picking it as it went into the water column. So I said, okay, this is a pain to smash it in, yeah. let it sit in the refrigerator and put it in there. So then I just started grating it into small pieces, and he started eating right. it right away. Right. And okay. the same is true in the other tanks, as you'll see. I was gonna say, so to be clear, if anybody's gonna try to do that, you mixed in the black worms, et cetera, into the, the food, so it, it knew it was food, or did you just go cold turkey? No, I just went cold turkey. Oh, I didn't okay. mix the black worms into this. Okay. I got it eating, eating black worms, but I wasn't gonna do well on a diet of nothing but black worms over time. Right. So I tried to find something else once it did start picking and eating. Right, right. And like the, the multi-bars were picking at the rocks, so that's why I mix stuff on the rocks to get them to start eating it. Sure. And so now, um, have you noticed anything different as far as since you've been feeding it from a filtration end of it? In other words, you know how some foods like they jack up your phosphates or, you know, just weird stuff. No, because I'm doing a small amount often, mm -hmm. I really haven't gotten the nutrient load than when I did the one big bolus feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a lot of years, we're all kind of lazy. We all do that. Okay, it's Thanksgiving dinner, at 8 o'clock every night for your tank. Right. And that's really not the best way to do it. Uh, there's actually several papers that show that if you feed small amounts often, the fish can metabolize it. The waste isn't as full of nutrients as the normal right. waste because they take most, most of it up. And as you can see, all the fish in this tank are pretty fat and happy. Right. So I, I'm happy in that context, but I also don't have the algae blooms. I've not had bryopsis. I've not had those kind of issues in this tank from getting a massive amount of nutrients, phosphates or nitrates. Right. Right. Nor have I gotten them in the other tanks. Well, you know, uh, while we're talking about this tank, we haven't done an update video, so let's do a quick update on the tank and what you're happy with, what you've done. I've basically more or less revamped this tank. Okay. After two years, it still wasn't where I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. So I basically cleaned out the entire sump. I took all the detritus, all the mud, all the calerpa, mm -hmm. everything, and I made it a much cleaner, simpler system. I try to take as much offline on this tank as I could to make it run much more smoothly. Mm -hmm. 
I'm I still like dosing that. everything. I still like that light. <laughs> there's a motion sensor light now, so when I go in here, all I can do is move. Uh, there's calcium. Uh, no, there's uh, alkalinity, calcium, acro power, and then uh, magnesium. They're all balanced. When I test, everything's stable all the time because mm -hmm. I don't have to add a whole lot into this tank. Right. There's a Tunzi skimmer that I m mentioned that I used to replace the uh, Reef Octopus mm -hmm. because the Reef Octopus pump broke, and as a result, I couldn't replace it. I wanted to get something that was reliable. Uh, I trust the Tunzi name, right. so I put the Tunzi on. As you can see, it takes out a lot of nasty stuff. It gets cleaned three times a week. All you got to do is lift it up. There's nothing to untwist. There's nothing. Yeah. It's easy. It takes literally two minutes to clean the skimmer. So. The more often you can clean it, the more efficient it is. It also shuts itself down if it start if it gets too full. Sure. So as a result, I don't have to worry about an overflow from that because that was my whole goal right, with everything. Right, right. Um, I switched over from the Elos top off to a Tunzi top off, mm -hmm. and I put the uh, uh, sensor, the flow, the uh, water level sensor on there yep. on the uh, on the reservoir, so that once a day I just have to push a button. Fills it up, doesn't overflow anymore, so I don't flood the house like I have done in the past. No. Which is always bad, but to which we've all done. <laughs> I'm still running the Reef Dose Reef Doser, which does yep. everything. Yep. Uh, and other than that, and, and, and so I have uh, two uh, MP40s in here, and I've also streamlined the electricals. Uh, I've taken, there was the uh, yeah, that strip that was sitting that underneath the tank. Mm -hmm. That was getting pro damage from humidity, from water splashing, because these fish splash like no other fish I've ever owned. And I went to uh, this newer unit, uh -huh. which has 10 plugs instead of eight. Everything fits, everything is labeled. All I do is push a button to turn stuff off. I don't have to unplug anything. It's a very simple system to run. Yeah, it looks impressive. Yeah, so when I do a water change, I just push a button, the auto top off system's off. Right. And I can push another button, the skimmer's off. Right. Uh, it's much simpler and it's much easier to do. So as a result, I do it more often. Right, right. So as a result, this tank is finally starting to come around. Uh, I've had problems with it as we've noted over yeah, the years, yeah, yeah, yeah. primarily because of you starting with dead rock and not really getting the bacterial cultures in here. Mm -hmm. I'm adding vibrant to here. I'm adding tons of bacteria and I'm adding uh, uh, with a B, Brightwell's well, yeah, uh, bacteria as well. Just to try and get those bacteria loads up here, I've added some rock with sponges. And for the most part, it's coming around, but it's still not quite where I want it to be. Right, right. And how long has it been up? Is this in two, three? This wow. is, I believe, yeah. starting the third year. Okay. And um, as far as just fish, though, though, no problems with the fish. I've had no problems cool. with the fish. It's right. the corals I've had issues with, and sometimes they're good, sometimes eh, not so good. Not so good. And um, you said you got rid of the mud and the whole algae color. Yeah, there's no refugium in here now. Now it's a, a sump that's easy to clean. Mm -hmm. uh, when I want to do a cleaning, all I can do is run a hose down to the literally the stairs. Sure. There's enough of a draw. I take everything out. Takes you know 15, 20 minutes. And now, what was the rationale for removing that? I just wanted to. That wasn't right. what was doing wasn't working. Sure. So I was going to try something try different some. that potentially could work, and it has worked on this system. From, from my point of view, is it where I want it to be yet? No. Right. Is it better than it was? Yes. But it's still not where I need it to be. Got it. Got it. And I just have to mention, remember how the planet tank used to be behind you? Yes. How it got replaced with that, Yeah, it right? got replaced with this little nano tank. The uh, Tetras are doing well. The Angels are hanging in there. <laughs> it's just so funny, Rick, because you had that... You know, the bigger tank. Yeah. And, then, and now it's got miniature on. This is Rosanna's and Ava's tank. They like a little tank. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'll go show you how the other fish eat in the other tank. Okay. Sure thing. Just like on the other tank, getting the fish to eat in this tank was somewhat of a chore. Particularly the blue face, the emperor otter, and these uh, orange spotted uh, rabbit fish were getting really skinny and nasty. They were as thin as a potato chip. So then I went to the same system of feeding them four or five times a day, feeding them the HPD. And all of a sudden, everybody started coming out. The Emperor that didn't eat for the first two weeks in the tank started eating. The blue face, which is always a pain to get to eat, eats like a pig now, as you can see. The Blenny comes out and eats the hogfish. Everybody's fat and happy in this tank.
The anemones get a lot of the waste food and are growing and reproducing. And while it looks nice now at night when just the blue lights are on, the other thing that I, I did on this tank was I switched out the Kessels to the Radions and that's made all the difference. Every year, traditionally, this tank's been up four or five years now. Yeah. In the winter time when the sunlight was way reduced, the Kessels just kept everything like eh, status right. quo. Right, right. Putting the Radions on everything is, is pretty much blooming now. Yeah. So even in the winter time, it's, it's cranking in here. The anemones are doing well, the fish are doing well, and for the most part, the corals are doing well. The other thing I did in this tank, hmm. I got a uh, uh, bristle worm trap. Oh, remember? Yeah, we, when you first got it, we were... We saw oh, I took out bristle worms that would make you cry oh, in the night if you no saw thing. them. Uh, some bristle worms were this big and the diameter of my thumb, uh, and they actually ate one of the singularias. Yes, that's what I was going to say. They ate the base of a singularia. I pulled it up and I pulled out six big ones. Uh -huh. And they ate some of the anemones. Uh -huh. So since then, I have gone on a, a uh, binge to kill off the bristle worms. And I've gotten a lot of them. Uh -huh. And as a result, everything has done much better as well. Uh -huh. I know there's people that love bristle worms. Right. I'm not one of them. <laughs> the small ones are fine. The big, humongous ones right. are not so yeah, good. That's right. uh, they killed some of the clams. These clams have now been in here. I got these from Biota. They were this big. They're growing really, right. really well in this tank. Right, right. So I may even uh, bite the bullet and get a blue squamosa. Uh huh. And that's the I top hear, off uh, unit. Yeah, I hear the top off gone. And you're but still, the zini has done better. Uh, everything is, is stabilized and gotten better. Are you still using the, calc, the top off? There's nothing special there. I'm just doing calcvasa for top off. Okay. I still have mud and calerpa in this system. Okay. Uh, I want to switch that skimmer over to a tunzi skimmer, mm -hmm. so I'll be all tunzi. So I, then I know what's going on. It's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's my next addition to this tank. And other than that, uh, I'm going to add a few more fish. I want to add a school of glass cardinals, mm. and I want to add a school of blue tangs. There you go. I had a school of blue tangs, but unfortunately. They kept getting sucked into the power heads. No. So now I have the power head set. So when the, these lights go off, the power heads shut down. So they don't get sucked in there at night. They never, <laughs> yeah. never happened during the day. It was always at night they got sucked in. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, the rest in a little R and R. Next thing you know. <laughs> yeah. Right in blender. That is awesome. So that will that will help a lot. But as the as the lights turn bluer and bluer, these anemones get even better and better, as does everything else. Dude, they're popping on this side. Because the singularias look brown during the day under sunlight, but when the blue lights come, they're bright green. And there's a couple other bright green things in here. And I also have a bunch of uh, soft corals I got from Biota that I'm growing out in the frag tank downstairs that are really sweet and colorful. Those will eventually go in here and fill out this spot and a little bit over here. So over time, this, this tank will be even filled with even nicer soft coral. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Now we'll go check up and see the feeding this tank it's the same you can see how fat the particularly the powder blue tang which is in a lot of tanks is really thin here I have a, a skinnier one eighth of an inch thick egg crate so here I throw in some pieces two for the bigger fish so this way you get some for the big some for the small yeah, it's just so funny because, like I said, totally opposite of. And there you can also see the flow in the tank. Wow, yeah, look at that. That's nice. I'm not sure it picks it up. And everybody comes out to eat. Yeah, the fish in this one, I mean, to the point, it's nice and fat. Yeah. Look how big the Machiliceps is over here. Yep. How fatty is thickness-wise. Yes, yeah, to your point. Like, 
when you're diving, the pictures you see when you're diving kind of stuff. Yeah, you don't see emaciated fish when you're diving. And right. I, I've seen enough tanks with enough emaciated fish. I mean, Sanjay feeds heavily. His fish are all big and fat and happy too. Right. And now here on the little tank, do two things. One, like I said, I put the Galenus and the Rotifers into the water. And then add a little bit of this, which gets broken up real nice by this little fine screen. And the Rasses and the Antheus and the Firefish. Look how nice that tank is popping. With nothing, right? Yeah. Okay, so you were talking about the other E's. What was the one, Julian? Cyclop E's. Oh, but it, in but the morning this tank gets uh, Julian's Kalen E's. So and, and then because of the Goniopora's in here, mm -hmm. I throw in a little bit of Gonio power every night about an hour before the lights go off. Just a pinch. Okay. And it seems to be making a big difference in the growth of these. Okay. So let's talk in general about the feeding side of it. To your point, you're a new hobbyist, lessons from like the feeding thing, right? Um, feed small often. I mean, everybody says it, but nobody does it. Right. But feed a small amount often. I mean, I probably put in maybe five to 10 grams of food. There's not right. a lot of food in this tank, but you can see how fat and happy everybody is. From the pintail rats to the rhomboid alice, Everybody eats the magma rasses. Everybody keeps their color. Right. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll match these colors from when these fish came in. Right. Granted, it's only three months, but I've had fish lose their color in as little as a month. Right, right. So feeding this very diet and feeding it often I, is a lot better, even in a nano tank, particularly in a nano tank, sure. where you don't want to have a lot of nutrients build up. Feeding a real small amount. For there, I would I, I, can't, I can't wait to add the feeder onto here right. and just do the small amounts more often. Right. So instead of feeding it four or five times a day, I may feed it 10 times a day. Sure, sure. And in that case, I may get some small antheus in here, some purple queens or something that need to be fed at least that often right. and see if I can get those to do well in here. Right. Uh, as my friend in Germany had them, he had them for two years and he fed them eight times a day. Ooh, there you go. So, yeah, yeah. I've tried a couple times at four times a day, it still wasn't enough. Right. They lasted a month and then they still got emaciated. So you have to feed them like every once an hour. Sure. Now one of the things that I asked you earlier that, again, one of the, one of the reasons why I like the food is you can mix all your foods into the HPD and then that way you don't have to always go back and forth, but you don't. No, the only thing I add into this is garlic. Right. Uh, particularly if I get new fish or I have a fish with mm -hmm. ick, I know there's a debate. Does garlic make any difference or not? Right. When I've added it to the food, I've had less of a problem with ick over time. Right. Just my experience. Right. Uh, I use a dried garlic. I don't use the liquid. I mix it in. I get it in Amish country, and that's what it's basically so, dried, so dehydrated dry, garlic. Dried, dehydrated garlic? Dried, dehydrated garlic. And do you use it like a clove, half a clove, quarter? It's, clove? I use, uh, for one of these, I add roughly half a teaspoon. Okay. So, so it's a lot of garlic. Yeah, that is. Okay. But it doesn't stop them from eating it, and okay. I, I think it's an even bigger food signal. Uh, garlic has, quote unquote, a lot of different properties that are potentially good for a lot of organisms. Right. I've not had any, you know, fish throwing it up or having bad breath, so, you know. <laughs> Okay, so then as far as your um, regimen, we have, we've heard lots of small, you started adding HBD in it, you also do the, not the cyclops, but the colonies. Kalanese and, and the frozen okay. kalen and frozen rotifers and frozen cyclops, as well as uh, frozen small mices for this tank, okay. uh, big mices for this tank, okay. uh, either uh, Gemcos or PEs, uh, they like them both. And do you do all the rinsing stuff? Too? I do all the rinsing because okay. uh, when I forgot how greasy oh, yeah. Yeah, PE's yeah. mysis was, and then I watch, it's like having Crisco on your fingertips. Yeah, yeah, very much so, right? That's, again, one of the reasons I always just, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as you can see, the skimmers didn't go nuts when I fed. They're pretty stable. Right. And they'll take out a lot of the waste. Uh, tomorrow they get changed again, Monday, Wednesday. Right. It's, it's easy, so I do it more often, and I think they're a lot more efficient. Good deal. Okie doke. So to wrap up this segment that Mike did for American Rigs HPD, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't usually endorse a lot of things, but I, I will say I'm, I'm very impressed by yeah. how many hard to eat fish that I have, hard to feed fish 
not hard to eat. They're probably all pretty good. <laughs> I was going to say. Hard, to, hard, to, fi- hard to feed fish that I have, all eat. Uh, there's also a magma morass in here that was also gave me a difficult time eating. But now that I feed this all this often and small, his colors have really come out. I mean, he was kind of blah, right. looked like a female. Now you can see why the colors of a magma morass are so right. impressive. Right. Okay, so let's let's get that list roughly. We know, for example, the idol is a hard to eat fish that he took, but what other you know? Regal Angel in here, mm-hmm. Potter Blue Tongue in here, the uh, various fairy wrasses and flasher wrasses mm-hmm. are often difficult. Feed them more often and small. Mm-hmm. The uh, multi bar angels upstairs, the gold flake angels upstairs, the Imperator and the blue face. Uh, those okay. are all for me difficult to get to feed a lot of times okay. and as you can see they were all eating like pigs mm-hmm. which is typically a sign of a pretty healthy fish right right yeah I know one of the um, one of the viewers actually was big on his ribbon eel I guess ribbon eels are tough yeah that was another one although to me I think ribbon eel I still think that's a tough fish to eat. it's a very tough fish I had one upstairs uh-huh. his favorite food was firefish <laughs> He ate four firefish, and I finally caught him eating one in mid-swim. Uh, a gourmet. So I had to take him out, but I should have kept him and gotten rid of the firefish. Right. Because he was eating, and he was a really cool fish. Yeah, well, yeah. The problem is, is keeping him in the tank, because they tend to find any little hole, sneak out, and right. dry up. Right, right. <laughs> well, on that note, thanks for the time, mate. Yep, thank you, Russell. <laughs>